Now, uh, I've got an amazing stat here. Um, now, people like me and uh, many of you watching are deeply invested in politics and have been following this primary season very closely and have worked and phone banked and voted and poured their hearts out for the candidate, right? Whether it be Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton, there were passionate people on both sides of the aisle. Now, the stat that I mentioned that amazes me so much that I kind of had to frame it in that context was that only 9% of Americans voted in this primary. Think about that for a second. 9%. So here's the numbers, and this is broken down by the Washington Post. Now, the United States is home to about 324 million people. 103 million of them are children, non-citizens, or ineligible uh, felons that don't have the right to vote. So now you take away those people, we're down to about 221 million eligible voters. Now, based on some of this data, 88 million eligible adults don't bother to vote at all. Not in, not in a general election, not in a primary, certainly not in the school board, nothing. They, they just don't vote. 88 million people. You take that away, we're, doing, we're down to about 133 million eligible voters. Now, based on the share of eligible adults who voted in 2012, an additional 73 million did not vote in the primaries this year, but will most likely vote in the general election based on those numbers. So now we're down to about 60 million people who voted in the primary. Now that remaining 60 million people of that, 30 million each voted for Republicans and Democrats. So you cut that in half, 30 went to, uh, you know, uh, what, about 15? I don't know how the numbers quite break down, but 30 million total each voted for both Republicans and Democrats. That leaves the other half who voted for other candidates. Now, some of them, of course, might be uh, the third party, third party candidates, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein. Um, also, they might be Bernie Sanders, is probably a big part of that, okay? So now that equals out to about 14% of eligible adults, 9% of the entire nation that either voted for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. 14%. Wow. 9% of America. That's pretty pathetic, dude. They ended up choosing the most, the two most disliked candidates that have ever run for office on either side. Wow. Now look, there are some good reasons why many people didn't get to vote. And one of them, of course, is voter suppression. They actually literally didn't get to vote. They were suppressed. Now, during the primaries, we saw some of that. Now, you had a uh, forced closing of uh, DMV offices, full, uh, polling places that were closed, especially in primarily African-American areas. Uh, you also had voter ID laws. A lot of that, of course, depressed the turnout. There's no question that had an impact. How big of an impact on these numbers, I'm not entirely sure. Now, you also had the gutting of the VRA, the Voting Rights Act, thanks to the Supreme Court. Uh, and because of, a lot of that, uh, because of that decision, a lot of the states were applied where they actually were watching to make sure people were not uh, stopped from voting, prevented from voting. Those places have gone back to disenfranchising people of color, poor people, students, and Democrats, essentially. And that, of course, is unfortunately by design. As Paul Ryrick, uh, known as the father of the modern conservative movement, famously said, as, quote, as a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. They don't want people involved in politics because for them, it's a winning strategy. Now, that works for Republicans, but also neoliberals kind of want the same thing, for people to not be involved. And sadly, they've kind of won because the majority of Americans were not paying attention. They didn't get involved in politics. They weren't involved, they didn't vote. Those 73 million people who didn't vote in the primaries, but vote in the general, look, they've got no reason to complain that they hate their choices. We had a true progressive that was willing and ready to fight for the Democratic Party. On the Republican side, if you're a Republican that hates Donald Trump, but you didn't vote in the primary, well, it turns out you've got no right to bitch. 
same thing. If you didn't, if you don't like Hillary Clinton and you were not involved in the primary, you didn't vote for Bernie Sanders or whomever, Martin O'Malley or whatever, uh, what's the other guy? I can't remember. Lincoln Chafee, Jim Webb. If you, if you vote, didn't vote for any of those guys, then you have no right to bitch. But if you did vote for one of those guys and you're not happy with Hillary Clinton, then you do have a right to bitch. You absolutely have that right. But if you don't vote, then don't complain about the result that you didn't want. That's what I'm trying to say. Now look, there is a chance that if those 73 million Americans had paid attention to the primary, which by the way, in my opinion, is way more important than a general election, we might have had a much different outcome on both sides. Imagine, Trump might not be the Republican nominee. Bernie Sanders could be the Democratic nominee, but we didn't have that because those 73 million people who vote in a general election, they sat home during the, during the primary. Primaries aren't important. It's only the general that's important. It's the other way around, dude. Because by the time the general election comes around, we've already got our two terrible choices. And it happens every single election cycle, every time. Now look. What we have because of that is the two disliked, most disliked candidates ever presented to us by the two parties. And look, I understand that in the votes that were counted, there were some that were not. People were turned away from the polls and there was considerable collusion in the DNC to stop Bernie Sanders from getting nominated. I get that, right? Now, the only reason to fight that is not to withdraw. It's to get more involved. It's to outnumber them. You can't disenfranchise 233 million eligible voters and get away with it. Now, if we all got down there, if we all got involved, if we all voted, you would be amazed at the things that we might be able to achieve. Instead, we just all found out what happens when we don't get involved.